Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Sabrina, sorry, the chilling adventures of Sabrina, uh, this is season 1 episode 4, it's called Chapter 4, Witch Academy, so full spoilers for the episode as always. <laughs> well, I call it Sabrina for short all the time, that was a, that was a first I, slip. I, I know, but <laughs> maybe one of these episodes will get a smooth intro. <laughs> maybe, maybe episode 10. Look forward to it. So, yes. Uh, so this episode, she's actually going off to Hogwarts, or or the Academy of the Unseen Arts, as this show is, is calling it. But, Joe, you know it's funny, I was thinking about this as I was watching it, is that one of the key differences between this and Hogwarts, or just in terms of, or just in general, Harry Potter, is that in this... No, magic's actually related to Satan. They're all, they're all Satanists. <laughs> they're all saying pray Satan. And yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, I don't remember in Harry Potter, you know, every, every day they come in, Dumbledore's like, everyone pray Satan for the morning. <laughs> everyone no, pray no, Satan. So on this note, I don't know if you've seen the news articles this week. The show or Netflix is being sued. I I, I did see this, yes. Yes, based on the, the statue that's in the school. Some satanic group is like, no, 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 that's our design. Stop stop doing it. They want them to CG it out for all for they they want it gone from the show. <laughs> I'm like, that's a big request. You're you're making light of our satanic beliefs. <laughs> No, they 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 actually um I think they were saying that um its its inclusion is damaging to their brand because it implies that uh, you know that that they're evil because it's being associated with evil things and they think it harms their reputation. Oh, so so they're saying they're not evil and they want to be seen as not evil. Yeah. Okay. All right. They're 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 saying it's the equivalent of putting a uh you know like a crucifix in your school for uh, of evil people. And and then you know because then that would get associated with with Christianity or you know or, or you know, take any religious symbol you want, and you know. Well, I mean, statue looks pretty evil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll sort it out. I, I don't have a horse in the race, as as, as it were. <laughs> no, I just think it's very unlikely that they're going to remove the show, CG it out, and then put it back up. Unlikely. I think they'd rather just pay them off. <laughs> yeah. Here. Yeah. Have a have a wire of money. If if they're entitled to it, the lawyers are probably trying to figure that out right now and just make sure they're not. But <laughs> probably. Yeah. Yes. Um. All right. What was I going to say? Yes. So so she's in the academy, and we kind of get this sense of the subordinate school kind of thing, and the weird sisters are there. There's a, a new potential love interest. I, I, I'll phrase it like that because. There's kind of a spark, he's kind of into Sabrina, but obviously she's still with Harvey, so we may be getting a bit of a triangular type thing. Um, we'll see. Mm. I, I think the reason why it may go down this path beyond just the usual love triangle drama bollocks is because it's you know it's her choosing between her mortal life and her witch life, so she has a love interest on both sides. It... Both are equally annoying, though. Potentially, yeah. I, I, I mean, he seems okay. He's not. He's not as likable as Harvey is so far. He's a l- little bit on the smarmy side. It's kind of a bit of a digwad. <laughs> he's oh. like Sabrina. I stole your dad's journal from the from the library here. Yeah. 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 She so remember that later when you're thinking about me. See you later. See you later, babe. Uh, that that was an actual scene. That was a reenactment of a scene from this episode of Sabrina. Uh, so. A lot, lot of things going on in this one. The main thing at the school, though, is that Sabrina is is undergoing this harrowing, which is uh, one of these hazing traditions, uh, and it's Prudence and her her weird sisters who are who are enacting it. And the idea is to make her go through all the th- the awful things that suspected witches, or in this show's case, actual witches at the time, had to go through. Uh, well, the first ones, you know, trapping her in the, the tower for a night in the cold and yeah. Uh, and I did. I saw the joke coming when they they come in in the morning, and she's kind of like you see the arms around her, and she's like shivering and kind of speaking to herself. I'm like, the joke here is is that it's not effective, and she's going to turn around and just be like, oh hi, good morning, and walk out. Yeah. And sure enough, that she kind of does that because Salem has sensed danger, and Salem came running into. Yeah, so she wasn't talking to herself; she was talking to Salem. Yes, um, yeah. I'm not sure how Salem helped beyond just give her company, unless his goblin powers meant he could heat her up a bit. <laughs> yeah, I think just company. Yeah, but yeah, whatever, whatever works. But he's in trouble. Sabrina's kind of pissed that she's not getting to take the 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 classes she wants. In fact, she gives her intentions to Ambrose at the start. She's like, "My only intention of of going to this school is to learn to conjure the Dark Lord, bind the Dark Lord, and then cast them out." 
and I'm like, you're taking on Satan. You're actually pretty, planning pretty to ambitious, take, yeah. take on Satan. Yeah, Rel- relatively ambitious. You, I don't think you're going to be doing that by the end of the school year. That may, that may take a few years of of building up. I love when she gets there. It's like, this is my timetable. Where's my conjuring? Where's my binding? <laughs> I want to conjure. I want to bind. <laughs> These are the two things I'm here to do. And she gets shafted off the choir, and she's not happy about it. And then Prudence isn't happy because she's a better singer than she is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. Uh, so you get the whole Mean Girls set up at, at, at Witch School thing. That's essentially what we're doing here. Um, but the dark twist of the episode, of course, is that we find out that one of the, the there's these, these kid ghosts coming about. One of whom was kind of the the, the 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 usher, if you will, for for Sabrina when she arrived. Yes. And we find out that these are all witch, former witch students who died because of the harrowing over the years. Like, not everyone makes it through this. And Sabrina, upon learning this, goes to her aunts, and they, they find the kids, and ultimately Sabrina is able to sort of, they, they help free the kids so they're not bound by the, the rules anymore. And they can sort of, they know their purpose going forward is to actually stop the harrowing from happening. So when the Prudence sisters bring her out to the, because the first time they bring her out to the tree just to uh, wait for the night and not turn around. And they've put a spell on her so you can hear all these creepy messages. It sounds like her father, it sounds like, you know, whoever, Harvey, Harvey. Yeah. you know, behind her. She can't turn around. Uh, and then the, the last time, though, after all this goes down, they bring her out to, to, to be hung, essentially. And instead, the ghostly kids lift up all three of the sisters and hang them until they agree to, to cut the shit, basically. Um which Blackwood's not happy about. He gives Prudence shit for being bested. He's, he's not giving her into trouble for harrowing. He's like, no, you get bested by a, a half-breed. You should yeah. be ashamed of yourself. Yeah, it's like, she's brand new. She doesn't know what the, the hell she's doing. Come on. Be uh, better than he, this. He's like, yeah, Dark Lord wants her here, but he didn't say anything about making it a pleasant stay. <laughs> yeah. Make her life miserable. Uh, so so that was, that, was, that was a fun enough little plot. I added, added a little bit of weight. It, I think what it really did, though, was more for the ants than it was Sabrina. For Sabrina, it was yeah. kind of the first couple of days, and it was like, okay, here's how evil it can be and the, the people she's going to interact with. But for ants, it was like, oh, here's actually take Zelda and actually maybe make her likable a little bit. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I, I realized? It, it, it's kind of been in my head over the last couple of episodes. Mm-hmm. The ants in this, they're Cain and Abel from the Sandman comics. Yeah, you know, the, the Neil Gaiman stuff. Mm-hmm. Gaiman. They are ex- whatever. I don't care. I'm bringing yeah. it up because after we talked about him in something recently, we got shit in the comments because you said Gaiman. And then I was annoyed because I didn't correct you because I wanted to, and I didn't. <laughs> you so. know, the amount of stuff I don't correct you on with names. <laughs> no one brings it up. Because it's obviously wrong, whereas this sounds like something you may, you know, you actually think it's Gaiman. It doesn't matter. Just go on. It's irrelevant. The point is that they're basically Cain and Abel. Um, it was a couple of episodes ago that, that it clicked. I forgot to mention it. It was the line where Zelda says, you know, it's my Satan given right to, to kill you as, as many times as I want. Mm. And uh, that's exactly, well, not Satan given, but, you know, God given in, in this sense, in this case. But that's exactly the thing with Cain and Abel, that he gets to just kill his brother over and over. And no one else can do it, but he can do it and he'll come back to life. What I liked about it though is that by the end, because I think Zelda got a good showing in this episode because we we see she's asked by Blackwood to be a, a midwife because he can't have you know to keep miscarrying him and his wife, mm-hmm. Lady Blackwood, and she she kind of reluctantly agrees because she's not done that in a while, but she agrees to do it, and then like we we see her like when she's called back to help with the whole the whole kid thing and he, she talks to him and she, she gives him shit for not giving her class he's supposed to have and Sabrina gets the, uh, I noted it down, the uh, Acheron configuration to fix it. Um, of course I noted that. I wasn't going to remember that. <laughs> I was just going to call it uh, a fancy cube. Uh, As a cube. Yes. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get to that when we talk about the last scene because it's more relevant there. But, you know, she gives him shit for not giving her classes she want and then when she comes back for this she, she talks to Blackwood again, she... She when she comes out of the office after talking to him, because he basically says, oh, "I'll leave it with me. I'll deal with it." But you know, everyone's Harold. It's tradition. She she comes out and Sabrina's you know is okay. What what happening? And he's like, "Oh, he's going to take care of it." And she's like, "Do you believe him?" He's like, "Of course I don't." Let's go talk to the kids. It's like, oh, Zelda's actually like very capable. I mean, because so far she's been very self centered and she's felt she's been very cold, very cold. But not even that. When Wardell uh, comes by the, the the house, when uh, we'll get to 
uh, the Ambrose plot in a minute, but when she comes by the house and she's snooping around and collecting hairs and fingernail clippings, which are collected in a little jar for some reason. I... Yeah, who's not putting those in the bin? I think it's Sabrina's. Sabrina, that's kind of disgusting. Just I clip them away. I, I, I'm all for clipping them, but just put them in the bin. And and just just vacuum. <laughs> if you clip, just 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 run a Hoover through there. You know, <laughs> well, that's too much to ask. Just collect. You've clearly got them because Harvey definitely has a mobile phone in this episode. Oh, he does. No, you're right. You're right. So they've definitely got a Hoover. To be fair, even if it was the fifties and sixties, they still have a Hoover. They do, but I just I'm just really <laughs> establishing I noticed the technology this time. That's fair. No, no, no. There's technology to to be found. Uh, but yeah, so when she comes in and catches Wardell, though, she's immediately like she's suspicious of her. She knows something's up. Whereas you know, Helda was like, "Oh yeah, you're here for a funeral and to make arrangements." Yeah, yeah, let's go in there. And she's like, you know, just kind of being, well, Helda. She's she's been you know, pleasantly so, useless. Yes. Uh, Whereas Zelda immediately is like, yeah, she better get out of this house. And she's like, I interrupt. She's like, she knows something's not right. She, she, She's very capable. We're getting that kind of sense yeah. in this episode. And then I was liking that up to a point. And then by the end of the episode, after the subject of the harrowings and how cruel they can be come up, and we hear, we hear multiple references that she did this to Hilda when they were at... She definitely at killed Hilda a couple of times during a harrowing. Most probably. And when it's brought up... Uh, she she apologizes. She she actually she she makes tries to make amends for it, uh, and in a very cold sort of Zelda like way. But there's some emotion in the scene, and then they kind of bond afterwards because she's, you know Hilda's all I'll I'll put the kettle on. We'll, we'll have tea while you're staying yeah. up. I I did think there was a a nice irony with with Zelda being so horrified by you know witches killing other witches during the harrowing. <laughs> and, and you know, all killing her own. This is unacceptable. And I, obviously she just kept. Kills a, kills a sister on a regular basis. Yes. Whenever she feels like it. Yes, but she knows she'll come back, which is the it's, it's true. Yeah, which is the difference. It's still until awful. Until one but... day she won't. Until one day she won't. Yes. Uh, so no, I, I thought Zelda really benefited from this episode more than anyone else. We mentioned Mordell snooping about. Uh, she creates a, a viewfinder in the mirror. She, she she makes like a magic circle so she can look into her mirror back at her home. Yeah and see Sabrina and I actually laughed out loud when she she, she she uses it the first time at the end of the episode and she sees it she's just talking on the phone to her boyfriend and she's like okay that's enough of that I don't need to see it anymore this yeah, is boring yeah. <laughs> that is pretty boring that cracked me up to be fair Sabrina and Harvey are quite sweet together for the most part yeah not feeling it you're not feeling Sabrina and Harvey uh, no no I'm not I ain't not likeable enough I don't know I don't buy it do, what do you not buy I think it's too I don't know. It, th- this is the, the the one bit where I feel like the the leftover CW influence uh, from the show, uh, from its from its inception, it feels like okay, no, this side of things is left over from that. Because it feels straight out of out of out off the CW. It doesn't feel like it belongs with the rest of the show. Uh. I don't know. It feels a little bit different to the CW to me. I think. Yeah, it feels a bit more intention because it's kind of that whole thing where it feels like the 50s and 60s it feels a bit more like classically pulpy in that sense it feels like it's more of that era fair enough almost to an unrealistic degree because they're so happy and delighted to be each other all the time but i think that's kind of what they're going for they're going for the sugary sweet kind of yeah i just don't buy it and it uh, yeah i don't care i don't care about harvey (laughs) no no, harvey's all right i don't like his dad his dad can Take a running jump. Uh, speaking of Harvey, he 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 he's left on his own. He's all upset because Sabrina's gone. But Roz and Susie are spending the night together at Susie's place, and we find out that Susie's got this uncle who went mad because he saw Satan himself in the in the mines. He doesn't know what's saying, or they don't know what's saying, but we know what's saying. The Dark Lord. And when Harvey hears about this, he insists on coming over. I do want to point out, though, that they were watching uh, Carnival of Souls on on the TV, which is a very good film, might I add. But the reason why I'm pointing it out is because... It's another royalty-free one. It's public domain. They did not have to pay to use this, which is baffling. This is Warner Brothers. They can afford to pay for movies. And, you know, they, they regularly do. They often do, yeah. But for some reason, they, they keep cheaping out on this show. And uh, I guess the excuse is, oh, they like old horror movies. I'm like, okay, you've used the two famous ones that are public domain. So 
Next time. <laughs> they're reaching if they get another one now. Well, see, now they'll just stick to Warner Brothers' own movies. <laughs> Which is fine, because yeah. for most people, that's just, oh, it's just a, that's enough movies that there's a variety there. Yeah, yeah, it's just enough. It's fine. Uh, still, though, I, I do like the movie a lot, so I'm, I'm glad it gets a shout. But they go up, and he's all demonic, and he grabs Harvey, and he's like, ah, oh, he's coming to devour your soul, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Uh, I will say, I had a, a real problem with this plot in the first time it came up. They obviously they went up to the room and they were horrified, mm-hmm. but we didn't see him at all, and it felt really jarring. Like their reaction, being that horrified when they walked in the room, it was yeah, so it, sudden. It, and I was like, "But we're not getting any sense of what they're seeing." I didn't, I didn't understand what was wrong at all until later. Yeah, I, th- I think maybe the I think it's okay to leave it a mystery and not see anything, but the reaction was so strong that we had to at least get like a. Yeah, like I didn't know was it. I didn't know if it was just because both of them reacted. I didn't know, is it just, okay, he looks weird? Is he doing something? Like I didn't know if it was just, he's lying there, but he looks funny, or was he actively doing something? I, I don't know. I, I didn't get any sense of what was actually there in the room, and that made it really hard to, to kind of understand what, what they were reacting to. Yeah, that's fair. And then when they go back up again, they're surprised to see him actually tied to the bed. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Kind of, yeah. It kind of just seems strange to me. Well, that's strange. I think that's the point. It's, it's like... No, not, not that, they were, that, that he was tied to the bed, that they were so surprised about it when they'd just been up there. And, you know, uh, was, was he not tied to the bed before? No, because he, he came out, I think. Um, and I think the, the, the look of shock in their face told me that they were not expecting him to be okay. tied to the bed. But maybe I'm wrong. But again, yeah, I'm... See, I... I'm playing off their reaction to it more than I'm. No, this is this is this is my problem with this scene specifically. I just I was actually unsure of what was supposed to be happening on the other side of the camera, what we weren't seeing because hmm. the reactions were very extreme, and I just didn't quite get what they were reacting to. Yeah, fair. So if we jump over to Ambrose, who's got a date with Luke, and he he wants the astral project to a coffee shop, and Hilda isn't willing to do it. But I did get a chuckle here because her motivation to change her mind is when Zelda comes in and, you know, acts like Zelda and tells it to shut up. And as soon as she walks don't, out, she's don't like... Don't do anything. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fine. Get some candles. We're doing this shit. Just to spite Zelda. That's why she's doing it. To, to feel much. To feel yeah. strong again. Uh, so, and we find out we hear about something called a psychopomp. Something I also noted down. Um, if I, I had to turn on subtitles just to see what they were saying because I didn't quite... I didn't quite get what the word was. I was like, psycho something, psycho pop, psycho pimp. <laughs> what, yeah. what's happening? Evil little birds. Yeah, they're, they're basically uh, like, uh, you know, was, was it Black Flash from, from you know, was it Death yeah, Flash? Okay. okay, yeah, Black Flash, I'm with you. Yeah, Black Flash, uh, who's like, made there to make sure that there's no one alive that shouldn't be alive. Or in this case, no one's, it's kind of the opposite, no one's in the astral plane that shouldn't be in the astral plane. Yeah, see, I didn't quite take it necessarily that way. Okay. I got that uh, any they're almost uh, like a, the ferryman to death to the afterworld. Like uh, whatever was in there, if your soul was in the astral plane, they assumed you were dead, so they carried you off to you know the beyond. Oh sure, okay. I, I didn't think they were actively going. Oh, you shouldn't be here. We're taking you. It's just if you're here, you're dead. They take you. That's it. I still kind of get the impression though that it's normal to have people in the astral plane. So I'm, I'm wondering. Who did See, leave I, alone? I, I didn't because, you know, uh, when when Zelda comes back in, she's like, you know, really, astral projection? That's pretty stupid. Yeah, uh, but he also points out that she does it all the time. Yeah, maybe there's protections. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Because uh, when he brings it up to Hilda, uh, well, his defense is that, no, Zelda does it all the time. She, she projects all the time. Yeah, maybe she's found a way, you know, maybe there are way to, yeah. ways to hide yourself. Uh, maybe. Which is why I was thinking that maybe he specifically is for, you know, because he's not allowed to leave, he's forbidden from even doing it this way. This is like a, a loophole that he's not supposed to be using. Well, we know he's forbidden. You know, um, Zelda says, you know, you're forbidden from leaving, including your soul. Yeah, right? which, which is so, why I'm thinking it's specifically that like, he's really not meant to be in there. Maybe. I, d- I definitely didn't get that impression the way, way Hilda was yeah. talking about them. Well, maybe, you maybe, could maybe, be right. We might hear more about it as, as, the, as the mythology builds. I hope so, because these, these are the things that, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker for mythology and lore. Yeah. No. But it was a fun little sequence. So there you had Wardell snooping about the house at the same time. It was, it was a yeah. fun little bit of chaos. So this, this was a nice little middle of the episode, because it's kind of split up all the school stuff on mm-hmm. either side of it. Um, so when you come back to the 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 box, uh, the the Ar- Archeron configuration, uh, which is an arcane 
puzzle essentially but we find out from nick that uh, sabrina's father actually built this one and that you could even go mad because you, you look inside it's like a kaleidoscope you can look at it at various points and to solve it you have to get everything to line up i guess inside it's like a rubik's cube kind of it's like a kaleidoscope rubik's cube combination yeah and you can go mad though trying to figure it out because you're looking inside it and it's all these colors and it's blah 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 um, but she gets the journal from him and she's looking through it and there's like hints about it and then she folds the pages and she gets some more hints and then eventually she sees a drawing of a woman with her eyes shut and understands oh you have to do it with your eyes closed and again it's magic whatever we'll, we'll go with it <laughs> and she she does that and the box just kind of springs open and dust comes out and we end with this cliffhanger of this scary looking dude with big sticky up here which I'll make one prediction now I'm going to assume he's going to be friendly probably because she screams her head off, that's what we cut to the credits on. He's going to be like, oh, I'm sorry I scared you, miss, but uh, you opened the box. Yeah. I- either that or it's going to fill Hellraiser and it's going to be like, you opened the box, <laughs> we came. I'd be alright with that. I watched Hellraiser like a week ago for, for screams, so, so it's in my head. Yeah. So when she opened the box and someone showed up, I was I just... I, no, I, could, I, get, I, I get why Hellraiser springs to mind. All I could hear was Pinhead in my, he- in my head yeah. saying that. That that and uh, uh, will tear your soul apart. That's the other big line from that movie. Yeah, I will say actually a little uh, surprised me how quickly this moved along. Mm. Um, and when she got the the puzzle earlier on, and and, and it was like, hey, you know, like that, you know, I was working on that for three years or whatever it was. And then you know we cut to her, you know, at the end on the bed, and she's kind of just looking and flying through the journal. I figured this would be something that okay, we'll get to later. In the this season. is a MacGuffin think... for the end of the season almost. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think this was. Oh, we'll just open it now. Uh, I'm wondering if because it was her father that built it, that it was actually just meant for her, and it was never going to be opened by anyone else. I assume so. And you know, I'm not. Uh, I'm not saying this is a negative. I was just surprised that we were doing it already. Yeah. Um. I, I think they gave it gave it enough though, where she gets the journal, she sees the clues, um, and then he had on the idea that probably he just designed it so that only she could could open yeah. it. You yeah, didn't. So like, yeah, it's fine. It doesn't feel like a cheat to do it that way. Um, o- only a spellman, right? Only a spellman. Yes. So we'll find out who this crazy looking dude with the hair is at the in the next episode, presumably. Mm. With a bit of luck, we'll see. Uh so cool. Uh I think that was everything, uh, more or less, in the episode. I don't know if there was any other points you wanted to bring up in terms yeah. of character beats. Um I did laugh that Sabrina was saying that she she was going off to a convention with her aunt for, for for the weekend. And admittedly it sounds like she only had to spend the night at the school for this first weekend because it was the uh the initiation. Yeah, but um, I was wondering. Wait, so what's it's just going to be like an ongoing basis? She's going to say like, I've got a club that I go to, <laughs> like three times a week or, or yeah, whatever it's it is. Just helping out with the aunts. Yeah, right. Doing whatever they do. It's going to be a pretty ongoing lie. This one <laughs> to to sell why she's pissing off to this magic school. Yeah, she'll think of something. Yeah, probably. probably. Um, uh, but yeah, so um, no, I, I I had fun with this one. Uh, I like the school. I like the the possibilities that come from that. Um, it's, a, it's a it's a nice design, you know, in, in terms of set design. Hmm. Uh, you know, they took all the, the 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 pentagrams. You know, like all, all linking together all the rooms. I mean, to be fair, the show's set design as a whole has been very good. Pretty and, excellent, yeah, and very consistent with a, a theme. It across has. the board but, so um, no, this stood out as particularly fun because they were going a bit more over the top with it right oh sure yeah, this was maybe the more more extravagant of the, of the yeah, bunch yeah, for sure but i did like the, d- the design a lot but like you know it has been good throughout and very consistent so yeah. I mean, nothing to really fault in terms of design but this just stood out as oh this is this is the showcase I will say the camel blur effect. It was very prominent in a couple of establishing shots. Whenever we seem to cut outside to the house with the grass, it always seems to be in full Any whack. Any time with Salem, I'm finding it to be really jarring. Yeah. It doesn't seem as consistent throughout the rest of the episode, though, as the last few to me. No, I agree. It, like I said, the establishing shots and shots with Salem. But, um, yeah, it was. I, I just want to tell you, I'm kind of digging how Blackwood and Wardell are kind of stepping on each other's toes. You know, she, she's getting caught with her familiar in the school and he's like, no, piss off, this is my domain, you don't need to be here. And she's like, no, I have to look over that girl. The Dark Lord wills it. Yeah, yeah, it's like they're both on the same team, they're both going to the same objective, but they both want the credit, ultimately. Yeah, it's like they're both gunning for the same promotion. And they're, they're, yeah. Yeah, they're trying to get into each other's ways to get it. So, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's you know. It's a fun, fun little rivalry. 
I think what worse about that is it's one of the things that I, I often like when it comes to anything supernatural or horror is you it's basically just a real world thing that just happens to have the extra stuff involved. So this is just, you know, this could be a plot in the office with two people going for a promotion. That's fine, <laughs> but we're in this other world now where we've got all we these magic. Ham it up and, and have these, these actors be delightfully wicked about it. Yes. So there you go. That is episode four of Sabrina. So you can check out uh, episode five in a couple of days. I think it'll be up on Sunday, the next one. I think that's the plan. So look for it then. We'll be juggling it with Homecoming, which is the Amazon show that's starting uh, tomorrow at the time of recording. Today at the time of posting. Uh, and we'll be juggling between Sabrina and Homecoming uh, for the next little while. Hopefully it shouldn't affect the every other day s- schedule too much. But uh, if it does take two days for an episode, don't worry too much. We're, we're working with it. We'll get there. It's coming. Yeah. So that was episode four. So let us know what you thought of this one in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on the Twitters at mail underscore fuzz. Of course, most importantly, head over to patreon.com slash TV if you want to have a look at what we can offer you over there. If you want to support the channel and the show and everything we do here, you can do that there. Uh, but otherwise, that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching TV, guys. Have you got any vanilla?